the last class we had discussed with various activities that have been prohibited under the Competition Act of 2002. Now today we will be studying about cartel and also the Competition Commission of India. Now let us look at the meaning of cartel. Cartel means it includes an association of producers, sellers, distributors, distributors or service provide, providers who by agreement amongst themselves limit control or attempt to control the production, distribution, sale or price of goods or services. Now here cartel is a group of people. In simple it is a group of people. Now those people can be producers, those people can be distributors, those people can be service providers. Okay, It is just a group of people. What do they do? They come into a common mutual agreement amongst themselves. Now maybe all the service providers or maybe all the uh, manufacturers, right? they come into a common agreement as to limit control or attempt to control. So they try to control the production, they try to control the distribution, they try to control the prices of goods and services. As we just discussed about the activities, right? setting a minimum price or setting a maximum price. Okay, So they try to have maximum profit or attain maximum profit by mutually agreeing with each other the terms and conditions. Right, So they focus, uh, they mutually agree and focus for example the dish TV right, that we commonly have now. Uh, it can be um, act or it can be uh, other uh, uh, you know dish tv uh, companies that we have i don't really recall those names uh, but i remember one is act and we have all the other uh, dish tv companies that provide you uh, instead of cable services right now they also have an agreement that they're going to cover certain area right now let's say x uh, dish company covers uh, you know area 1 to 10 okay so the other dish providers do not come and approach this area people for connection right even though these uh, residents of this particular area come and approach another service provider they will tell no we are not going to they, uh, this is not our area have you heard about that now this is called as a cartel where distributors or service providers mutually agree upon to they select area so that they they focus on what profits that profits must not be hindered due to competing okay so this is a better way for them to compete by mutually agreeing upon uh, certain areas they serve or certain areas they distribute goods and services so they don't interfere with each other's businesses but both of them earn good amount of profit is that clear this is the meaning of cartel and the purpose of cartel is to maximize their profits So next up we are going to study the Competition Commission of India, in short it is called as CCI. We are going to study these five topics under this uh, institution, how it has been established, the composition, the term of the office and other uh, chairperson and also the other members, number four, duties and powers of commission. Number 5 Offences or Penalties First look at the establishment. With effect, from, we know that this uh, competition act was set up in which year? 2002. But then it took some time. Next year on 2003, 14th of October 2003, Government of India uh, noticed or uh, was notified to uh, establish an institution exclusively to deal with the issues of competition or to make sure whatever activities have been listed out, whatever rules, conditions or terms have been listed out in the Competition Act, there has to be certain institution or a group of people who is authorized to make sure people follow those conditions or follow those instructions given in the Act and also for those who do not follow or for those who follow the prohibited acts, what action can be taken upon? Okay, so for this very reason, Government of India instituted Competition Commission of India, the CCI, 
on the date 14th October 2003. What is its objective? Enforce the Act. As I just mentioned, whatever is mentioned in the Act, okay, in, in terms of having a fair and healthy competition or is there any specific company who's tried to dominate the others in the industry or is there any service provider who's trying to dominate the other uh, companies in the industry, right? How to prevent all such uh, activities are the objective of CCI. It is to enforce the act and prevent activities that have an adverse effect on competition in India. So the head office of CCI is in Delhi currently, but uh, the act says it can be, uh, the head office can be uh, you know moved to a different places as and when the central government decides. But as of now, it's in Delhi. But if next year, if they decided to be some other city, it can change. Okay, so this is the establishment of CCI. Number two, composition of commission. CCI consists of a chairperson and six members appointed by central government. As CCI is, is on a central level, now the board or the committee members consist of one chairperson and uh, six members. So a total of seven members is the committee of CCI. So the head of the CCI is called as chairperson. All the others are called the members of CCI. The members appointed shall be a person of integrity, special knowledge and professional experience of not less than 15 years because it is important because they are going to rule or make certain decisions or choices or even give judgment to all the companies existing in India, correct? So that means they themselves have to be a persons of integrity, they need to have special knowledge, right? in a specific area some can some can be from uh, service industry some can be from fmcg one can be from the retail industry etc from all types of background we need people who have excelled and also who have an experience not more than 15 years that means 15 uh, not less than 15 years what is the minimum criteria of experience a person need to be a member 15 years in their respective field okay it can mean telecommunication pharmaceutical or agricultural industrial etc whatever competition we are talking about in that specific field each member of this committee must have a minimum of 15 years of experience so the current chairperson uh, of cci that is currently who's holding the position in uh, cci is shri ashok kumar gupta he is the person who is heading Competition Commission of India currently. Number three, term of office. Term of office is five years from the date of appointment and shall be eligible for reappointment. So what is each member, whether it's a chairperson or whether it's a uh, other members, they have the uh, term of office to serve for five years from the day they have been appointed and in case they uh, still don't fulfill the maximum age they shall be reappointed let's look at the maximum age they cannot hold the office in case of chairperson the age of 67 years so maximum up to 67 years is what they can serve who is it the head of the institution that is cci chairperson let's say he has been appointed as chairperson in the year when he was uh, of the age 61 years so he can serve five years until 65 now can he be reappointed yes because he still not attained 67 is the maximum limit to retire correct so another two years he can be reappointed and served as the chairperson again in the case of other members, all the other six members of the committee, maximum to the age of 65. So if they have been appointed at the age of 55, five years they can serve and they still have the eligibility to serve another five years, right? It depends upon the decision taken up by the central government. Is that clear? 
So from the date of appointment, they have five years to serve. What is the maximum limit for chairperson? 67 years. Maximum age for other members is 65 years. Number four, duties, powers and functions. Number one, to eliminate practices which create adverse effect on competition. So in case uh, certain companies are creating a very high, uh, they're pricing their products very high or services very high, right? Or they're creating some 40 products, right? All these adverse effect on competition will be eliminated to promote and sustain competition. So we have seen many cases, correct, in terms of uh, companies, uh, you know, showing up as very profitable. For example, you can take Satyam Computers or Enron Company, right, where they have books of accounts have showed very good uh, amount of uh, uh, profits. They are able to lure and attract a lot of investors and then the company goes uh, fraudulent and the company is said to be fraudulent company. Right, we have seen so many cases uh, uh, like that. So, which affects competition, which affects uh, people to lose the trust even in the other companies which are genuine. Right, let's say out of 10 companies, two are fraudulent, it automatically uh, leads uh, you know downfall to all the other eight companies, it's going to affect the healthy competition. So, people start to believe that every other company has a fraudulent intention right so that is going to affect a fair competition in the market so cci powers or duties is to eliminate such practices number two to promote and sustain competition right now why do we need competition if there is no competition we will not have the best Yes or no? Now we all have competition. It can mean any uh, any format, uh, you know, on any platform, right? Even it can be exams. Who's who knows the best? Or it can be a quiz, right? It can be a cycling competition, or it can be a uh, you know market, like right? uh, this. What we are talking about industries competition. It is always good because we get to know who is the best, and not in terms of uh, profits. It might be one of the criteria, but we are talking about, uh, you know, sustaining company, right, in terms of profits or in terms of uh, providing quality oriented products or services. We have seen so many companies that have been existing for the last uh, maybe 70 to 80 years and they still are continuing, right, perpetually they are continuing or still we have customers for that company. Example, we have a company Colgate right uh, itc these are all companies not that have been established just 5 to 10 years before they have been established long way before and they are able to still sustain because they are offering a quality goods or services and there are people who can purchase them there is still market for the long established companies so we need a cci to promote and sustain competition if there is no competition, then the quality of the goods will really not matter because everybody else is giving the same quality. But if there is competition among the competitors, that is among the players in the market or industry, they strive to be the best, correct? They strive to be the best in terms of quality, in terms of perfection, right? It can be anything. It can be a manufacturer of a car, manufacturer of a pencil anything it can be they companies want to be number one in the market not just by having a goods at low price etc but providing a quality goods and services because people are always willing to pay extra for quality yes you know people are always willing to uh, pay extra for quality so therefore cci is going to promote and sustain competition nowhere we say that we abolish competition no we always encourage a fair and healthy competition. Number three, to protect the consumers. Of course, the, at the end of the day, consumers need to be satisfied. Whatever products that they consume must be unharmful. Okay, and it can be food products or it can be any electronic goods. If it's going to cause harm 
to people who consume it, who purchase it, then the very purpose of existence of the company is a failure, correct? So we need to make sure the protection of consumers is our priority, that the consumers enjoy our goods, right? That's why we always have, uh, you know, especially for service providers, we have a feedback. We always consider the feedback of people that have used the services. Now, it can be for an example, a simple example called uh, you can go for Ola services or uh, Uber services or let's say Urban Club, right? They uh, from the beautician services to a uh, home cleaning services, etc. They always have, uh, you know, on their web pages for the customers who have utilized the service, right? Who enjoy the services to put a feedback there or to give the rating to the person who has, uh, you know, worked or to the person who has rendered the service. How would that help? That will help the company to grow because they're giving you a quality service at a affordable prices. At the end, if consumer is happy, if consumer is satisfied, you can be assured of your profits or you can be assured of your sales because automatically people will start telling others about your company so and so company services are good so and so company services are you know prices are very affordable right so automatically you can have unpaid promotion it means to say a free promotion for your products so make sure you focus on consumers number 4 to ensure freedom of trade so there there should be no institution or no company that can stop any industry or stop any uh, entrepreneur that you uh, prohibit anybody to trade or enter into the market it must be free for any person to trade for any person to set up an industry or a company or a shop or a service industry provided they follow up all the legal procedures given in the act okay given in the companies act etc they need to follow up the legal procedures as long so they to make sure that everybody is free to trade in a given market so these are the duties powers and functions of cci so the last topic here the fifth one offenses and penalties of act any person who breaches the act or fails to follow the direction of the act is considered to be an offense so something which has been prohibited by the act if any company or industry follows it up it becomes what a breach right or fails to follow the directions given still it is called as an offense to the act so what are the penalties number one penalty for failure to follow with the directions of commission so if there are certain directions given by the cci and if industries or companies are not able to follow what is the penalty over here? 1 lakh per day during each fail during which the failure continues. So as long as you rectify your error, as long as you clarify your error, each day you will be fined rupees 1 lakh each day. Number 2, penalty for making false statement or omission to furnish information. So this is a very common uh, error or this very common offense that uh, industries or companies make. Just to boost sales, they make false statements, right? It can be in terms of conditions. It can be in terms of warranty, right? They, uh, they make their talk so impressive and they convince the consumers, uh, customers to buy their products or services by making a false statement. If a product is not uh, performing certain activity, they make sure they say it is performing that activity by which the customer is happy to purchase it or to omission. Omission means what? Omit, forget or you block out or you uh, do not say certain things about the product and still sell that product, right? If there are certain activities that you need to inform the uh, customer especially with electronic goods the method of using right or uh, the charging of the electronic device if you're not telling them you're omitting it purposefully purposefully you are not trying to uh, tell those conditions and if customer has faced any kind of damages or injury then 
not less than 50 lakh but may extend to rupees 1 crore is the penalty for such companies. Is that clear? So, this is a very commonly error that we look in the market. Number three, penalty in relation to furnishing of information. So, if there is a complete information not being furnished, okay, complete information is not being furnished, then the penalty may extend to rupees 10 lakh. Is that clear? So, these are the offenses and the penalties of the act. In simple, you can remember, if you don't follow up what is written in CCI, it is an offense. Or if you go against the CCI, something is prohibited and you're following, that still will turn into offense. And penalties will be according to the error or mistake the company has committed. Is that clear? So, this, is the, this completes your Competition Commission of India concept. And it also completes the chapter, competition and consumer protection laws. This was your chapter, correct? So, this completes your fourth unit.